Welcome to Waters Online, where mountain gardening is made easy with the mountain gardener, Ken Lane. There we go. Now tell us, fertilizing our yards makes such a difference, right? Huge difference. How do we do it? Yeah, mountain gardens don't have food. Typically, in a, in a mountain garden, you've got about that much topsoil, and they've the contractor cleared all that out. And so you're left with sterile soil. And so it's a real challenge to get enough food into your landscape. And so plants, you want to get the blooms, you want to get the plumes, you want to get better growth, more foliage. Right. It all makes a huge difference. And sure. so we needed to fertilize right here in the front of Waters Garden Center's uh, landscape. Sure. Thought, hey, we've got to fertilize. Let's just show folks how we do that. So we're in summer. I'm going to use two products. One, I'm going to take my Waters all-purpose plant food. I like this food. I've designed it just for mountain landscapes because it's all natural. And so it's got cottonseed meal, bird guano, iron, sulfur. Mm -hmm. Here in Arizona, we've got alkalinity issues. And so we want to lower the pH as much as possible. Other parts of the country, you might want to raise the pH. Sure. Well, here we've got a lot of sulfur. So this is what it looks like. So you spread it in your hand broadcast spreader. Here I've got a bunch of trees and sh shrubs, basically. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it by hand. Okay. And so what I'll do is I'll take a handful. I've already know uh, how much each one gets because I kind of have done so much that I know. So here it takes about a handful or two. I'm going to take two handfuls and sprinkle it around the base of each of these plants. And so it'll bring these potentia so they'll start to bloom better. The uh, deer grass, I'm going to sprinkle it just at the base. I'm going to try not to get it right in the heart of these plants because it does have nitrogen. That means it can burn burn the foliage. So you okay. want your fertilizer, you don't want it to rest onto the foliage or you can lose that leaf. It's really important if you're doing uh, uh, agaves, yuccas, some of those plants where they, the foliage actually comes down and, and everything is focused towards the roots. Sure. Well, if you got a bunch of fertilizer there, you can burn out and kill off the entire plant. Ferns can be rather sensitive. So kind of watch. You can never go wrong with fertilizing at the base, right around the, the uh, right around the plant. The next question always comes in, Ken, should I water it in? Should I work it in? Will it go through the weed fabric? I've got all this shredded bark down here. Will it go through the bark? Right. I just chuck and I go. Uh -huh. I let nature take its course. I let the irrigation come on, just water it in. The main thing is get some food onto the plants so it has access to it. The great thing about organics as well, they're slow release. And so many of the synthetic or man-made uh, fertilizers, they're very fast release. And so there's not a lot of room for error. Okay. Uh, natural foods are much slower release. So you're less likely to make a mistake and burn your lawn up or burn up a flower bed. Now, here's the secret with fertilizer. This makes a huge difference. This goes from, it's not a plant food, it's a soil food. I'm feeding the soil, the bacteria, the fungi, the stuff. I'm reinvigorating the soil. Remember, we had this much topsoil, and the contractor came in and cut it all down to put your house in, into play. Um, this is humic acid. So it looks like, like chocolate for the soil, and it is. Uh -huh. The soils love it. If you put this at the same time, I'll put it on at about the same ratio, and here, it doesn't feed the plant, but it encourages the plant to root sure. deeper into the soil. Huge, huge difference in mountain uh, landscape settings at getting the plant to respond and look so much better. Again, don't work this into the ground. I guess my hand turns a little chocolate too. <laughs> so this is amazing stuff. It's called Soil Activator. The other product was Waters all-purpose plant food, just an all-balanced natural plant food. This actually has no ratings like a lawn food, but it actually, it, uh, again, it just feeds the soil. Amazing on lawns. If you never want to thatch and aerate your lawn again, I don't. Soil activator. Really? Takes care of all of that. Just sprinkle it in your lawn. I haven't dethatched my lawn in probably five, six, seven years because I put that on a couple times a year. Amazing results because again, it feeds the bacteria that eats all the thatch up, uh -huh. and so it just eats it up for you. It does all the work for you, and that's how I fertilize. I fertilize spring, summer, so when everything's waking up, sure. we get rains in the summer. So into June, July, I'll fertilize, get another flush of growth. Uh, the most important feeding I believe is in the fall. 
So you want to fertilize October. Okay. Somewhere when you see all the fall trees going, that's your cue. Oh, Ken said to fertilize something. Come in and we'll get you the right food. And then I'll actually feed my evergreens in the winter. So they're starting, you only get one shot with evergreens. Mm -hmm. Pine, spruce, all those conifers. Uh, they only push that spring growth and then that's it. that's it. That's when they're setting their buds is in the winter. You can get that bud, that, that leaf bud as big as possible to get more growth coming out of that plant first part of spring. And that's fertilizing one, two, three. Excellent advice, yeah. Ken. Thank you. Come on sure. out and see us for, for more information on fertilizers and soil activators here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott.